hello again. Uh, I don't know how many people actually watch my videos anymore, but if you're the kind that did not like my videos that I did over the semester relating to women's studies and feminism, this is not going to be a video for you. Then again, you probably didn't click on it because the title will tip you off. Um, I wanted to do a video about what women's studies is and what it isn't. Um, it's a question I get a lot just when I say, oh, I'm a women's studies major, um, people are like, well, what do you do with that? What is women's studies? You know, your friends, your parents, God, I tell my parents, it was, it was interesting. And, um, you know, boyfriend's parents, which is always fun. Um, uh, the original reason that I wanted to do this, though, was because I was going through um, comments that I had gotten on those videos, and they were distinctly trolling comments, but I thought, why not actually address those in a calm-headed manner? Which is what you're not really supposed to do to trolls, you're supposed to ignore them. But, I wanted to actually answer the questions. Um, to start off with, um, women's studies, I'm going to focus on women's studies rather than feminism, because I'm actually in women's studies. Um, not every feminist is in women's studies, and not everybody in women's studies is a feminist, so I guess that's important to know. Um, it's rather nebulous. It's hard to sit down and say, oh, we look at this, we look at this, we look at this. Um, it's not like math or you're like numerical theory, like most people have a general idea of what math is or what science is. Uh, not a lot of people quite understand what it is to be in women's studies and it's kind of hard to say for sure. Um, and my definition is my definition. Other people will probably disagree. There's probably at least a few people who will disagree with my definition, but my definition just comes from my experience and what I personally have found within my own program. Um, in theory, women's studies looks at how women are systematically oppressed, and while that's what it is in theory, more in practice, it actually looks at how a lot of different type of people are oppressed. Um, and oppression in of itself, defining oppression is its own little area of women's studies. Um, it looks specifically at um, power dynamics in society. Um, people have power, that's just kind of a general assumption of a lot of different social science fields. Um, political science, psychology, sociology, you'll find a bunch of social science fields that actually assume that as part of their core um, teachings. And women's studies is no different. They assume that people have power, whether they should or shouldn't is its own question. Um, Women's Studies looks at who has that power, how did they get that power, how do they use that power, who is affected by that use of power, and, excuse me while I scroll through my notes, how people are affected by that use of power, and if those actions are negative, what can be done about it to uh, correct it. And, in and of itself, the question is, what is what does correct look like? Like, what should society look like if people had equality, if there was a sense of equality and uh, people weren't being oppressed? Because oppression, generally speaking, comes from one group having power over another group, um, which is, can be its own video. Um, there's lots of room for conflicting opinions, and this is generally seen as a good thing within women's studies, the fact that there is room for conflicting opinions. Um, it's actually very productive to have people who don't agree with each other talking about these things, because uh, if you're constantly questioning, then you're constantly refining and you're constantly remaining relevant. Um, so that's kind of one of the awesome things about women's studies that I really enjoy, is the fact that nobody will agree on everything. Um, there's a lot of misconceptions about women's studies. Uh, the biggest one that I found, especially through people trolling me, um, were that uh, feminists hate men. And it's safe to say that most feminists uh, don't, in fact, hate men, just by virtue of the fact that most feminists that I know of are women, and just by virtue of biology, most women are straight. So they've got to like some men. Um, 
but aside from that, I'm sure there probably are feminists who do hate men. And that hating men may or may not be related to what drives their feminism, but overall feminism doesn't teach hating men. Um, the general, what I consider the general overarching feminism, doesn't teach to dislike or hate men at all. Um, what it does is it does uh, call into question the position of authority that men have, um, and a big aim of feminism as it relates to women's studies, which a lot of people uh, kind of consider the academic arm of feminism is um, pointing out and dismantling male privilege, which is a whole video in of itself. Um, I think that's where a lot of people get the whole man hating bit. Um, it's just, and you can think about it in like very basic ways. When you screw up and someone points out that you screwed up, Generally, the most human reaction is to point at them and to say, oh, well, you're only saying that because of this reason, to try to explain it away, because generally we think of ourselves as good people, and when people point out that we are maybe are not good people, there's that cognitive dissonance that makes us not want to accept that information, and so generally I think that's where the whole man-hating bit comes in. Um, male privilege, real briefly has measurable ways, um, like in most fields still men get paid more than women, uh, they're more able to take uh, raises and get higher positions faster, just in general there's plenty of research that shows that, I'll try to link some in the doobly-doo. Um, there's a definite lack of political representation, I mean if you look at the graph of how many women versus how many men there are in Congress, big gap really big gap considering that women make up almost if not more than half of the population um, and also there are plenty of job areas which um, there are social barriers to women entering and thus there are a lot of uh, there's a lot of low representation think of math and science fields and as much as people like to say that it's improved which it has it's still a really big gap especially in I was in forestry originally and in most of my classes, if I wasn't the only girl, there was maybe be only one other girl in a class of like 40 to 60 students. So it's a big gap still. Um, and there's also ways that aren't so measurable. Um, one thing that gets talked about that I'm sure girls can relate to is the whole uh, virgin whore dichotomy. If you're not completely pure, then you're obviously a whore. Um, and slut shaming, like um, the way women who own their sexuality get uh, dissed and get called a slut, and all these different derogatory terms. Um, again, another video into itself. Um, the way advertising affects body image. It's very um, male centric if you look at body image. Again, another video. Um, and also, um, little things like competitiveness and female friendships like there's always this um and i'm not sure if this is completely relatable but i know i've had experiences where in friendships there's always that kind of the, the pretty friend and the ugly friend and there's always this competitiveness and it's encouraged by society for girls to be competitive for male attention um so those are some of the less obvious ways that male privilege comes in because men don't have to deal with a lot of that stuff um and again, with the whole privilege thing, it's no one hates anyone for having privilege. Well, maybe some people do, but in general, there's this metaphor that I always really liked that being privileged is like having big feet. No one hates you for having big feet, but try not to step on people. It's only polite. So that's kind of the way I approach it. Um, the other thing is that you can't do anything with a women's studies degree, and that's completely false. Um, personally, I don't know of many, if any, people who just have a bachelor's degree in women's studies. That's kind of rare. Um, most people have it in addition to other things, whether that be a couple minors, like me. Um, I have political science, history, and possibly French as my minors. Um, 
and most people have it in conjunction with other skills as well. Like I work at radio, so that's kind of communications is my other field. Um, with that in mind, women's studies still does a lot in of itself. Um, personally, when I went to interview to be an RA, um, it was actually looked at quite favorably because it showed that I could understand a variety of people from a variety of situations and still like treat them fairly. So it's definitely does something. It's not completely useless at all. And it, that skill in of itself to understand people is vital to a bunch of fields. So I really wouldn't toss it out. Um, that's pretty much all I really had to say with this video, and I'll be deeply surprised if anyone actually watches this all the way through. But if you have any questions or you feel like trolling someone, please feel free to do it in the comments. So, I will probably make a video again eventually. So, bye.